Hi, this is Reverend Cindy Fuller, InterQuest Church, and this is our spiritual story of the week. Uh, I have so many ghost stories and so many stories about um, beings on the other side that I'm going to tell a different kind of story today. This is a story about feng shui. So we were probably uh, five years into uh, InterQuest Church being a church, and it was getting difficult. Um, we were living on a shoestring in the beginning, and we came to a point where I really just didn't think we were going to make it. God had asked us to create it, and we'd done everything that we were guided to do. And I was praying, you know, God, you want us to do this. We're going to need to get some support. And I, I, was, I think this is about five years in, and we're 30 years this year. So it was June, and uh, we had lost... Uh, five thousand dollars year to date which was cash you know it was cash that was a lot of money and we had plans to go to a trade show in Denver it was a new age trade show and I just told Patrick I said let's just do it why not go out big we'll have one big trip and we'll enjoy it we'll see what the world is doing out there and then if we close our doors we close our doors because I had no idea of how to change this and when we landed in Denver we were all waiting for the shuttle to our hotel, and there was, of course, a lot of people there that were going to the convention. And we met a woman who happened to be a feng shui master, and her name was Val May. She was so sweet and kind, and we just started chatting with her. We knew nothing about feng shui. So she said, well, look, if you'd like, I can do a little read on your church um, in my hotel room tomorrow night. And, and we said, yeah, that's great. So we went to her room at the appointed time, and Patrick drew a schematic of our church, the uh, floor plan. And she looked at it, and it took her just a few minutes, and she said, um, you guys are giving much more than you're receiving. And we said, of course. <laughs> and she said, well, and people that are coming in are not staying. And I said, that's true. And she said, well, let's do this. And so she created a step-by-step -step recipe to shift some of the energy in the exterior of the church and the interior of the church. And bear in mind, we were in a 2,000 square foot, basically square foot property. It was upstairs, and um, we had a large sanctuary, 1,000 square foot, and then we had healing rooms. So we went back and went, well, let's do this. What else can we do? So we started doing the steps, and they were fun. They, We didn't even realize that we had put blocks in our energy field that represented the blocks that we had in ourselves. The belief that we maybe couldn't succeed, it didn't matter. Every time we moved one of these, these uh, steps, we would move furniture, we would paint a wall, we would do something to change the energy. Every time we did, there'd be a blessing that would occur, and it was amazing. This was in June, we started the recipe in July, by the end of the year, we ended up having a surplus of cash of $1,800. I said, Patrick, we're going to the bank. And that January, we went to the bank, and I talked to our banker, and I said, um, what do you need to give us a loan to buy property? And she looked at our numbers, and she laughed. <laughs> and she said, well, you're not there yet. And I said, I know we're not there yet, but God's got a plan for us, and we're going to do it. And so she gave us her uh, requirements, and we just took it in stride, and then we went back, and we kept diligently keeping things open. We wouldn't let the doors get blocked any longer. We kept the flow going. We kept the positive energy going. And we ended with enough money for a down payment on the property that we currently own. Since then, I went to study with Val May. And I spent two years studying, uh, it's called power feng shui, and what you do is you go into a property knowing nothing about the people, and you diagnose where their blocks are, what their issues are, because we literally put our issues on the walls. We tell people when they come into our home what our blocks and problems are. So it's a fabulous um, science, it's a fabulous technique. I don't do it full time, obviously. I did it for myself. I love this stuff. But I'm a minister full time. But I wanted to share this story with you because any time we go through a, a moment, we we'll always have our eye open to what block might be being created in our world. And I'm sharing this with you now because you guys have been cleaning your closets. 
You've had all this time. You're in your, your world right now. You're digging out stuff. You're reorganizing things. These are deep healings for you. Every time you go into a closet and you pull out all the stuff that's been shoved in there, you're actually looking at what you didn't want to deal with. So some of you are going, oh my God. Some of you are, are not knowing what to do with stuff. Some of you are finding the courage to get rid of it. But what I want you to re realize is that you're actually healing blocks. You're actually healing things that have been shoved out of your, out of your view. So as you go through and, and create order to your closets, you are shifting energy. And you're opening to something better. So please be aware, if I love it, I keep it. If it's still of value to me, I keep it. If I don't want it any longer, I release it. And then the other step that you need to remember is this. Every time you do something like this, pick a closet, pick a drawer, pick a room, clean it, organize it, purge it, you have to take downtime. You need to then turn to the family, your friends, and you have to relax. You can't just be a bulldozer and go room to room to room because you'll be changing too much energy too quickly. And so we want to do it very slowly. So do a room, take a rest, take a break, feel the beautiful energy starting to change. You will actually feel the energy starting to change. When you feel strong again, do another room, do another closet, another drawer. So we have this beautiful gift right now to heal. We can let the blocks go and move into a greater space. And if you like feng shui, read about it. It's a wonderful technique. Again, our my feng shui is a different approach to it. It's looking at the blocks to heal that. Typical feng shui is, is informational and it's wonderful. So realize that every single one of you who is cleaning a closet, you are doing feng shui even now. So enjoy this, enjoy that. Pay attention and take that rest time. This is Reverend Cindy Fuller. I hope you've enjoyed our little talk. If you have, hit like and leave me a comment. Love you guys.